Okay, so um, now I'm going to be talking to you about encryption to secure your profile. I have to say again about this um, topic that there is no real way of encrypting the data that you post on any social media platform. And the reason is very simple, because the data is not owned by you, it is owned by the social media provider. And this is very important to remember when you decide to post information on your social media platform because you need to remember that it can, will be stored and can be used in ways that you uh, defined in the privacy policy that you agree to when you accept to um, interact or to join the social media platform. Today I want to begin by recalling password security just because it is a platform on which most encryption uh, protocols or encryption schemes will uh, be based on when you need to use them in software applications. So for example, if you've used Word, for example, Microsoft Word, you know that there's a possibility of, for example, encrypting a file and creating a password for that file that you then share with the users who are going to be accessing the file. For example, if you're sending the file over the internet by email. And then we want to talk about what encryption is, how it works, for example, and um, to um, recall or to remember that um, this principle is not exactly new. We have used this principle before in the past. Um, so a good password, a good password as we talked about during the password lecture, I think it was lecture three, we said that it needs to be good, it needs to be strong and the reason that it needs to be that way is because you want to protect the system, the data that you, are, you have for example on your social media platform, you want to protect the device on which you're using the social media platform because you don't want people who are going to post unsolicited messages messages to be doing so on your behalf because of the damage that this can cause to your personality. You don't want to spread malware and you want most especially to avoid identity theft because that is so expensive for you. And then we talked about the fact that, for example, with passwords, if you choose, for example, passwords from unique pool sets, so for example, from, from numbers only, then the uh, possible combinations that you can have for your password is much less um, varied than if you chose a full set of printable characters, for example, um, ones that include both alphabets, um, lowercase and highercase characters, and so on that you can get a whole lot of possibilities that are on an order that is in the um, trillions of possibilities, which is much better than what you would have here. So what is encryption? Encryption is just basically a method of codifying a message or some information that you have and making it available only to the people who should know about this message and to who should be reading this message. And what you typically want to do is to have some sort of code that allows the people who are authorized to read this message to unlock the message and then to read it. So, for example, you have suitcases, okay? You lock your suitcase with some numerical sequence if you have one of those suitcases that um, rolls along and that you can um, look quite elegant in when you're traveling. And then you, um, when you want to unlock the suitcase, you put in the numerical sequence and you can open um, the suitcase, right? And then you have ATM machines. So ATM machines in which you go and first of all put in your bank card that sort of says, um, I am the person who is supposed to own this bank card and I am authorized to withdraw money, for example, from this uh, bank account. And then the bank account re uh, responds by requesting that you provide some PIN code to authenticate to say that you are who you um, claim to be and to allow you to um, to withdraw money from your bank account. And then you have, for example, with mobile devices, you have a pin code that locks, for example, your screen or fingerprint identification that locks your screen. And all of these are mechanisms for protecting your device or for creating some sort of lock or code between yourself and the device and, and that allows you to be able to unlock 
this information or to access this information. So pretty much in the way that um, you have some message or some information that you want to encode and make available only to certain people. So uh, most computer-based um, encryption schemes today use what is termed uh, public key encryption. And this has been in use since um, the 1973. And the basic idea of uh, public key encryption is to rely on the fact that you can publish some information. So for example, you can say, here is the code that I want you to use to, um, to codify information to send to me. And when you use that code to codify the information, I alone, for example, have the key to unlock the information and to read the um, data that you have sent to me. And this relies on the fact that um, if you choose, for example, a really large number, so the really large number represents your code, then it's easier, for example, to find factors that multiply to make up the number than it is to factorize the number. Factorize the number basically means that breaking down the number into these small factors that allow you to understand how the code was made up in order to deduce what the key might be. Okay. So I just for you to think about, think about what two numbers multiplied will give you 247. Okay, I'll leave you with that thought and then we continue on to talk about keys. Okay, so basically keys are numbers that are generated from these uh, big numbers that we choose in the same way that we choose factors to form, for example, 247 that we saw on the previous slide. Okay, and we choose them so that only the person who created the number or the computer that created the number knows about what the factors are that constitute that were multiplied to form the number. Okay. And then large, this large number that is um, created is then used with some sort of mathematical formula, if you want, to encode messages that are then shared. So what I would like you to do is think about it a little bit like an open uh, padlock. Okay. So for example, Alice says, um, here is, for example, my open padlock to Bob, John, and Harry. Okay, and each time Bob, John, and Harry want to send a message to Alice, what they are going to do is to encode the message and then lock the padlock. So imagine that what they do is to encode the message and then lock the padlock and send the message to Alice. And Alice, because she has the key, is going to be able to unlock the padlock and read the message. And each time she has read the message, she will make again available some sort of copy of the padlock for every other user who is wanting to do this. Okay, so basically what happens is that there can be any number of open padlocks available, but only Alice, for example, has the key that will be able to unlock all of these padlocks once they are closed. So that's the principle pretty much of public key encryption or of these large numbers, that you have this large number and you have a formula. And the formula operates pretty much as you have um, an open padlock, you close the padlock with the formula, you send it to Alice who has the uh, key, which is some other number to be able to unlock the message. Okay. So um, basically, that's the principle, and that's what I explained, what is constituted in those two other slides, in those two other points. OK. So um, for an example, in terms of how encryption works, so we saw what Alice does, okay? So the same works when, for example, you interact with, for example, a shopping website or you interact with a social media platform, except that the person applying the padlock and key process in this case is the shopping site provider or is the social network uh, provider. And this is why, for example, in order to log on to your social media platform, you need to provide, for example, 
example, your password. Your password pretty much says, I am who I am. I'm allowed to access this social media platform and I'm allowed to interact with this social media platform from this profile that I have. I'm allowed to post messages and so on and so forth. Okay. The problem with the public key encryption process is that if someone can figure out what the factors of the number are, then in essence, they have the key to your padlock. Because the, the open padlock, and as I said before, is constituted of some number that is a multiplied of two or several other really large numbers that are known only to the computer, known only to the person who created this number, who knows the, um, the factors of the number, and who, in essence, the factors of the number, because they represent, for example, the key to, uh, to your padlock, will allow the person who owns this um, public key to be able to, um, to decode your messages or to authorize you to access your information. Okay, so the trick therefore is to choose a really large number and how that is represented by, for example, is um, if we translate that from passwords to the actual encrypted, encrypted process, then what that means is that you need to choose a really large, a really good um, and strong password in order for that to translate to a really strong key to protect your profile. Okay, so the answer to the question of factorizing 247 is that it's a multiple of 13 and 19. Okay, and we see that if we were trying to do this manually, for example, there are several possibilities. One of them, for example, is to say that we have one, for example, times 247, which would still give us 247, and so on. Okay, and so the bigger the number is, the more difficult it is to guess exactly what these factors are. Okay. So I've talked about encryption today to talk about how it is it works in general, the general principle of public key encryption, which is the most popular or common encryption um, process that we have. Okay, I pointed out to you that it's difficult for you to encrypt any data that you post on your social media platform because you do not own the data and you can't control the data because the data resides at the service provider's level. But what you can do to protect your data, what you can do to help with the encryption of the data, for example, at the social media um, platforms in, is to choose a really great um, password which will translate into some mechanism for encrypting or protecting your profile where it res resides with the social media provider. But to bear in mind that because the social media provider owns your data, they can access the data and it is possible that they could do with it things that um, you had not um, foreseen. Okay. We, looked at, we look in the next lecture at cryptographic um, data support. So we look at, for example, how exactly we translate, for example, some message that we have in plain text form into some um, coded uh, message.